Good morning, are you ready to ride? I'm Justin Mogg, I'm 38 years old, I've never had a driver's license because I've always figured out great ways to get around without a car and that's what this video is all about. How to use a bicycle for transportation in Louisville and some other car free tips that will help you along the way. There's a, a lot of myths out there about biking, especially biking in Louisville, it's way too dangerous, you can't do it. The truth is, it's dangerous to drive a car. Riding a bike is pretty safe. It's slow speed. If you have an accident, you might fall over and scrape yourself. But I've never had a real serious accident in 38 years of riding a bike. I've lived in cities all around the world. I've never had a big problem with cars or traffic. But there's some tips you can use to help you stay safer, and that's what we're going to cover today. We're going to cover a whole bunch of things, practical tips, that will help you figure out how to use a bike for transportation. And it all starts in the morning with figuring out how to get to where you're going to go. Um, there's a bunch of tools for doing that better. The, the basic idea is you want to find a lower traffic route and you want to avoid traffic. So there's a few tips for avoiding traffic, right? One is taking neighborhood streets that have less traffic. The other is timing. Think about maybe if you have the flexibility of adjusting your ride time, your commute time, so that you're not out there when the most traffic is. But even when you're out there at high traffic times, uh, you can find safer routes. So figuring out the best way to campus is, is key. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, tools out there that help you figure it out. Uh, but one thing to always keep in mind is that you need backup options, right? So if it's terrible weather or you're too tired or your entire route is too far or you have mechanical trouble on your bike, you need a backup option. And in Louisville, the great backup option is our TARC bus service. And with your U of L ID, you can take the TARC bus service absolutely free and you can put your bike on it. There's racks on every bu uh, TARC bus in town. So that's a great backup option for you. But still, you gotta plan your route. And how do you do that? Well, there's two great tools I wanna tell you about. The first one is an online trip planner called ridethecity.com. And this has traffic volume data for every street in Jefferson County. So all you do is you put in your home address, where you're from, and whatever your destination address is, and it will map a safer lower traffic route for you through the city using those lower traffic routes. Google Maps also has a bike mapping function, uh, which is almost as good. It doesn't have that traffic volume data, but it does highlight things like the few bike paths we have in town, some bike routes and bike lanes and things like that. But another option for you is these printed Louisville bike maps, which you can pick up around the city and the Sustainability Council stocks them in the Student Activity Center and Ekstrom Library. You'll find them around town. They're a great tool for you as well. The good news about biking for transportation is that you don't have to dress funny, you don't have to dress a particular way. You see cyclists in spandex and all that kind of specialized gear, but you honestly don't need that. As you can see, I just bike to work in what I wear to work. Um, you know, there's a few small tips though. Uh, it, it helps if you wear non-cotton things that wick moisture a little better, even year round, because yeah, you're probably going to sweat a little bit, um, so it helps if that's not sticking to your skin. Um, if you're riding at night, uh, or any time of day really, it helps to wear light colored clothing um, so you're more visible. Uh, but other than those basic tips, um, you can just wear whatever you want and what a lot of people do is they'll have an outfit that they bike to work in and that they keep at their office, um, clothes that they would wear for work, uh, or they pack a change of clothes in their bag and take it with them. Uh, if you want a quick tip for avoiding wrinkles in your clothes, try rolling them up instead of folding them, that might help. But we also want to know how to use a bike year-round in any kind of weather. And so there's a few things that might be good to have, especially if you're going to be riding in the winters uh, and in the rain. Um, what I wear in the winter, you want to have some gloves, obviously, on your extremities. Um, and you want to protect your ears. So what I use is a 
it's just an ear band uh, around the winter. Some people wear a hat under their helmet. Uh, depending on how cold it gets, that may or may not be necessary. But a great thing to have is rain gear. Um, so I actually uh, bought some rain pants, um, and I just keep them in my bag for the chance when rain comes. Uh, and of course, a shell, a good, sh a good waterproof shell, really helps uh, keep the rain off you. And one other thing you might want to have, especially again if you're riding at night, is some sort of reflective or high visibility vest. Um, you know, you can get these really cheap at hardware stores. Um, just throw them on at night uh, and it'll really light you up when those uh, car light headlights hit you. So if you're watching this video, you probably already know why it's so great to bike. But let me just tell you why I love to bike for transportation. I mean, there's several reasons to do this, right? It's not just about reducing your ecological footprint, though certainly that's one of the biggest things you can do. I mean, we know at the University of Louisville that 10% of our carbon emissions are just due to people driving to and from campus. So in your personal carbon footprint, driving is probably also a huge part of that. But just think of all, all the other benefits. I mean. Uh, Biking is so much more fun than driving. Why sit behind the wheel and be frustrated at all the traffic and the congestion and all of that when you can be out in the fresh air enjoying a ride and getting a workout on your way to wherever you need to go. I mean, I never have to worry about finding time to go to the gym because I build into my day a, a six mile ride to and from home every day uh, plus errands, so it's probably more like 10 miles every day. And that's a great workout. If you're doing that every day, you're going to get fit really quick. I mean, there's a lot of data that shows that when people take up bike commuting, they lose a lot of weight. And there's a real good reason for that. But also think about how much money you'll save doing this. I mean, it's not just the gas for your car or your parking fees, but when you add up all of the costs associated with owning a car, the American Automobile Association has found that the average person in the United States spends about $9,000 a year just on the cost of owning and maintaining a vehicle. That's $9,000 you could have in your pocket if you use these tips for getting around without a car. Once you're on the road, there's a bunch of ways that you can help stay safer. It's never a guarantee, but there's simple things you can do to be safer. And the general idea is that you want to ride your bike just like you would drive a car. So use the roads just like a driver would. That means riding with the flow of traffic instead of against the flow of traffic. A lot of people in Louisville are seen riding against the flow of traffic thinking they're actually safer because they can see what's coming at them. But the truth is, it's way more dangerous because the drivers are not expecting that. And you might be able to see them, but they're not going to be able to see you. And we know that very few crashes actually happen because someone is hit from behind. It can feel intimidating, what's bearing down on me, I don't know. But actually only 10% of accidents happen because the cyclist is hit from behind. So ride with the flow of traffic, stay off those sidewalks. People think that's a safer place to be, but actually every sidewalk comes to an end at an intersection and that's where you're most likely to get hit. So it might be safe on the sidewalk, but unless you're coming to a full stop at every intersection, you're not safe. It's also illegal in Louisville to ride on the city sidewalks, so really avoid doing that unless it's your only, only option. Another thing to do is to signal your turns. So you want drivers to be able to know what you're going to be doing, to predict. Um, so just put your hand up and signal which way you're going. That way they'll know to slow down and let you do what you need to do. As a cyclist, you also want to ride in the farthest right lane that's going to serve your destination. So if you're turning left, you want to get out of the right lane. Even if you're in a bike lane, you want to get over to that left lane, signal, and take a left. Uh, otherwise, you generally stay towards the right, but you don't need to hug the gutter or the curb. In fact, a common bike accident is getting hit in the door zone. That's that three feet between a car and how far its door sticks out. So even if you're riding in a bike lane along a bunch of parked cars, you want to stay at least three feet away from those cars so you don't get caught in that door zone. So obviously another key to going car free is to be able to maintain your own bike. 
because you're going to have problems that pop up from time to time. We don't have time in this video to go in full detail about how to maintain your bike, but I just wanted to show you uh, what an example of a well-stocked toolkit would look like. Um, it's really important to have a few basics on hand, uh, both tools and supplies. Obviously one of the most important supplies is some kind of lubricant for your chain. Uh, there's eco-friendly varieties, soy-based ones like this from TriFlow, uh, tri uh, but basically you want some sort of uh, light lubricant for your chain. Um, you also want something to keep it clean. Your drive chain should be kept clean as well as your bike, so a, a light uh, grease cutter like 409 is a, is a great one. Um, and then there's some times when you get rust, and if you have rust, WD-40 is your friend. Um, I don't use it very much uh, because I keep my bike well maintained, but occasionally you'll have rust pop up, and that's good to have. Um, if you're working with your bearings, uh, you obviously want some grease uh, and some light tenacious oil is also helpful uh, to have for, for your bearings. Um, cables, uh, I usually keep on hand some uh, brake and shifter cables, maybe some uh, brake pads as well. Um, and then I always, whenever I have a part, uh, I, I just keep a little collection of uh, nuts and bolts kind of parts on hand, so I, so I have them when I need them. Um, spokes is another thing too, I tend to break a lot of spokes, um, and so I keep some extra spokes on hand. And then there's a whole variety of tools, I mean you could spend a lot of money on tools, but you don't need to. There's a few basics, um, you know, good pliers and, and vice grips. Um, some cone wrench uh, so you can get to adjust those bearings is really key. Maybe needle nose pliers, I use those a bunch. Uh, cable cutters um, so you can cut your cables when you're installing them, that kind of thing. Um, those are some of the basics. One thing I also really advocate people to use is um, some kind of Kevlar tire liner because flats are obviously your most common problem. So these tire liners simply go inside a tire between the tube and the tire and protect you from punctures. So that's the easiest thing to do. It's a really cheap investment, but boy, it'll save you a lot of trouble. So one thing that's really important for going totally car free is having a way to haul a lot of stuff, or really heavy or big awkward items that you can't just strap onto your regular bike. And that's where things like this trailer come in really handy. Um, this is a trailer made by uh, Bikes at Work in Ames, Iowa, uh, and you can get them in different lengths, obviously. Trailers come in all kinds of sizes. Um, a really simple thing to do is just to go uh, to uh, um, garage sales and look for those uh, old kitty trailers because people always, their kids grow up and they don't need the trailers anymore. And those are great not only for hauling kids around town, obviously, but also for throwing big stuff in. Uh, you can take bins like this or big boxes. Um, we've hauled hundreds of pounds on this. We've even put a couch on this trailer. So you can do it. All right, so we're almost ready to ride. Just a few more things I want to point out before we get on the road. Um, I mentioned how to carry stuff. Well, there's a whole bunch of different solutions for that. The most easiest is a bungee cord. Um, these are the cyclist's friend. Uh, they're so easy to just strap something on. You can see on my rack, which is a key thing to have, is some sort of rear rack. Um, I just leave the bungee cord on there and you can throw in a bag or anything you find along the way uh, under your bungee cord. So that's one great tip. But a lot of people also use panniers, some sort of panniers. Um, this is the one I use. The basic principle is that you get, you got a bungee cord that hooks on the bottom and then you just hook it over the top of your rack and you're ready to go and you can carry pretty much anything you need for the day. Um, a lot of them have shoulder straps, straps too so that when you get there uh, you're ready to roll. But here's a cool thing. You can make your own pannier out of trash. That's why I'm holding this Tidy Cat bucket, just to show you that it's a real simple principle. You take a bucket you find on the street, you put some basic hardware on it, uh, some hooks, you run a bungee cord through, an old bungee cord, just a half of one, and you've got yourself an instant pannier for hardly any money that's ready to roll and totally waterproof. How cool is that?